Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast on relationships between tables in a relational database and how to set them up in Microsoft Access. And I'm going to use our old friend, the Northwind database. Microsoft created this database to help us learn about Access. It's got all kinds of great examples, tables, queries, forms, and reports. And I'm going to temporarily delete this one-to-many relationship between customers and orders. One customer can have many orders, but I'm going to go ahead and delete that relationship so we can recreate it and really study how it's created. Now, when we create a relationship in Microsoft Access, we're in the relationships window, and we drag the linking field from the one table, and we drop it directly on the field that's going to be used as the foreign key field in the many table. Now, you actually don't have to drag from the one to the many table. It just makes more sense to do. Also, the linking field does not have to have the same field name in both tables. I do like that custom because it makes it very clear what field is used to relate two different tables. It can create a little bit of confusion later on in queries, which we'll explore in future screencasts. But for right now, we'll go with the field name customer ID. It's the primary key field in the customer's table. So we know it's on the one side of the relationship and drop it on the customer ID field in the orders table, which is now our foreign key field, so that one customer can be related or linked to many orders. When I click the Create button, we see that link line. It looks kind of wimpy. There's no one in infinity symbols on it. And the reason for that, I'm going to double click this to open back up the Edit Relations dialog box. But the reason the one in infinity symbols are not on that relationship is not because it's not a one-to-many relationship is a one-to-many relationship. And I can see that because I'm connected to this primary key field here on the one side of the relationship. So it is certainly a one-to-many relationship. But we don't get the one in infinity symbols unless in access we have this enforced referential integrity checkbox checked. As soon as I click that and click OK, the one in infinity symbols show up. I'm going to double click that link line and open that dialog box back up again because it's so, so important. So the one in infinity symbols tell you that referential integrity has been enforced on this relationship, and that's a good thing. In a nutshell, referential integrity prevents the creation of orphan records. An orphan record is a record in the many table that does not have a match in the one table. And if we use the slang of parent-child relationships, between our one and many tables. The customer's table would be the parent table. One parent can have many children. One customer can have many orders. If we use that parent-child analogy, then the term orphan records makes sense as well. We would not want an orphan record in the orders table, which would be a record with a customer ID value that had no match, that had no parent in the one table. If we had an order for a customer ID, that we did not have in the customer's table, obviously we would not know where to ship the order. So it would be trash. It would be garbage in our database. So enforced referential integrity prevents the creation of orphan records. So it's very important that we try to enforce referential integrity on all of our relationships. Now I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and I'm going to prove this to you by opening up the orders table and trying to enter a new order ID for a non-existing customer. So I'm just going to put in XYZ customer and tab out, and immediately I am told, hey, we do not have customer XYZ. So since we don't have customer XYZ, you may not enter that record into this database. You have to use an existing customer off of our drop-down list. We'll also cover that in future screencasts so that we do not create an orphan record. We do not need any orders in our orders table that do not have a matching customer because that would just be garbage. And the other way that you could potentially create an orphan is if you deleted a record out of the customer's table. Because if you deleted a particular customer out of the customer's table, any orders that were related to that customer ID would now be orphaned. So referential integrity will also help you prevent doing something like this. I'm going to click to the left of a record, tap the delete key, and I'm being told this record cannot be deleted or changed because the table orders, the mini table, includes related records. And we don't want those orders to become orphans. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK, close this table. And that's the beauty of referential integrity. It prevents the creation 
of orphan records, and an orphan record would be a record in the mini table that has a value in its foreign key field that does not have a match in the one table, in the parent table. Other things that referential integrity allows for you is you notice that as I click and unclick this option, these two checkboxes become available to you when you enforce referential integrity. Now, they're very, very important checkboxes because they change data in the mini table. They change data in the child table automatically when data changes in the parent table. For example, cascade update related fields. If I check that and I click OK and I open that customer's table, if I change this customer ID to some other value, all their related orders are also going to be updated. Now that's great for fixing mistakes. Sometimes when you're building records and you're building a record for the table on the one side and you establish that primary key field, A-L-F-A-I, well, what if that becomes an acronym to mean something controversial or unsavory? Then you might want to change their customer ID to something completely different. And so by clicking that cascade update related fields, if I change the customer ID value in the customer's table, it would cascade and update every single customer ID that it was linked to in the orders table. Sometimes we use cascade update related fields to fix errors when we establish a primary key field value that we no longer want, but we want to keep those records connected with the new value. The second one is even more dangerous, cascade delete related records. If I check that and I delete a record out of the customer's table, guess what? All their orders get deleted as well. So that one's really dangerous and very rarely checked. Enforce referential integrity. It prevents the creation of orphan records by entering an orphan record directly in the mini table, by deleting a record in the parent table that has related child record, and it also gives you the ability to use these cascade features which make changes to the child table when we're working with the parent table. In general, we do not want to be updating data in a child table behind the scenes when we're changing data in a parent table. Another very important option in the Edit Relationships dialog box is this Join Type button. By default, the Join Properties are this first option. And that means that when you're querying out of these two tables, you're only going to be selecting records where there's a matching value in both tables. If I always want to select all company names, regardless of whether they've made an order, then I would choose option two. Include all records from customers and only those records from orders where the join fields are equal. When I click that option and choose OK, OK, you see that the link line includes this little arrow here in the relationships window. That means that when I'm doing my queries, I'm going to get all the customers, whether or not they've placed an order. I'm going to double click that link line, going to join type one more time. Option three says, give me all records from orders and only those records from customers where the join fields are equal. I'm going to click OK, OK, and that's how that join line looks. But really, people, if we've established referential integrity, on the relationship before we've entered that first record, then this join type doesn't even make sense because again, referential integrity will prevent the creation of orphan records here in the orders table. Just say, well, give me all orders even if they don't have a matching customer. You know, that doesn't make any sense. Referential integrity, if applied before that first record is entered, will already give you that piece you will know that there are no orphan records, and so we don't need to worry about that third join type, which says, give me all the orders, give me all the children, even if they don't have a matching parent. So I'm gonna go back to option number one. So I like to leave my relationship screen like this with one-to-many relationships. I love seeing referential integrity enforced, and I love to see join type one selected, because after all, if I want all of the customers, even if they don't have an order, or if I suspect I have orphan records in the orders table, I can always change these relationship types for that particular query. And I'll demonstrate that when we get to the YouTubes with queries. 
So for my relationship screen, which are the default relationships that all the queries are going to start from, I like to define my relationships in the way that makes the most sense for the majority of my queries. And that is enforcing referential integrity, not including these cascade options, and leaving it at join type one. Now I do have to mention one word of caution. When you enforce referential integrity between two tables, that already have existing data. A lot of people think that it means that there are no orphan records in your database when referential integrity is applied to that relationship. And that's not exactly true. It means you cannot create new orphan records. But if your data is already in these tables before you create your relationships, you can enforce referential integrity on a relationship and still have orphan records in the mini table when the foreign key field is null. When we get to the queries in this series of screencasts, I'll show you how to modify the join type of the relationship with referential integrity applied. Options two and three help you find records that do not have matching records in the other table. Number two helps us find parents that do not have children. Number three helps us find records in the mini table that do not have matches in the one table. In other words, number three helps us find orphans. And a final note, if you open up the relationship screen and all of your tables and relationship lines are complicated because they're crossed, just start dragging them around by the title bar until you can clearly see all of the relationships between the tables. Notice that not every table has to be related to every other table. The other thing I wanna say is that there's a relationship report that you can create which creates a report object that you can see and print. It's a wonderful thing to have by your side as you're working with your database, as you're creating queries, because it will give you each of these table names, each of the fields in the table, and identify the relationships and the fields that participate in the relationships. So this is one of the first things I really like to do when I'm working with a new database, is get a copy of the blueprint of how the tables are related. It's extremely handy for all the rest of your development. Thank you.